guys and welcome to the third episode of The Officers. My name is Erin and I'm going to be your host for this week's episode. Get excited guys because we have some pretty awesome segments lined up for you. Starting off, you guys have probably seen or heard of the TV series The Tiger King. Well with her very own tips on how to take care of your favorite pets, our dog queen and your very own state treasurer, Miss Kenzie Klein. Hey guys, welcome to the Doll Queen. There's no Joe Exotic, no Carol Baskin, no Tigers. We do have me, Kenzie Klein, and some dogs, which should be some good fun. Uh, this week I'll be showing you guys how to trim a dog's nails and a kind of some helpful tips to help you guys feel more comfortable with it. I know for the longest time I was super scared to cut my dog's nails because I didn't want to hurt them and I was also like kind of scared they'd freak out on me. I hope this is helpful. If not, you get some cute clips of Skye who will be joining me in this episode. So let's roll the footage. So if you want to trim a dog's nails, all you need is a dog and with me we have Skye nail trimmers and then some treats. I think those help and I have some of them setting aside out of her reach. She knows they're there but yeah. So trimming nails really isn't as hard or scary as it looks. I know I was scared for a long time to try to cut their nails. It's just you know making sure they're calm and you know good. When you're looking at the paw, Sky, come here. So, when you're looking at their paw, you will notice that the nail part is white, and then there's also some pink. So the pink is actually skin, and it's called the quick. So you don't want to cut that far down. Uh, you should only cut so that there's still some white left on the top. It's kind of like with your own nails, you cut only the white part. You don't cut all the way down or else it'll bleed and you don't want that to happen. It normally helps if you have two people. So if you have someone else to help you to kind of like control the dog and hold them, that is better. She is a little all over the place. And then you just... Not all dogs are like this. Um, she just happens to be, you know, a pretty chill dog, but if they're hyper, it helps, you know, if you can get them calm in any way. I know if you accidentally were to cut a little short, you can always use cornstarch to help stop the bleeding. Were you a good girl? Were you a good girl? Here you go. Yeah, you handled that great. All right, Pepper, did you get all that information? Good, because we're going to need it. Thanks, Kenzie, for all of your tips. I'm sure all of our dogs will be thanking us later. Up next, we have a pretty sweet segment with your state secretary, Miss Carly Carpenter. Hey, guys, it's Carly, and welcome to my cooking show, Cooking with Carly. Eh? Eh? So... I'm going to show you guys today how I make one of my absolute favorite desserts. It's called Coca-Cola cake, which I know what you're thinking. That sounds really weird, um, but trust me, it's basically a chocolate cake with a special ingredient, Coca-Cola. It's fantastic. So let's go ahead and start. So a little side note, this is actually my Grammy's recipe. It was put in her church cookbook. She was a fabulous cook. Um, I really can't talk about her cooking enough. I seriously miss her so much. So, I'm going to try to replicate her fantastic cooking. I make no promises because I think you and I both know it's not gonna turn out as well as Grammy's, but we can try. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get into all of my ingredients. 
Hey Graham. So first of all, I have my vanilla extract. Then I also have some mini marshmallows. I have confectioner's sugar, three sticks of butter, eggs, some cocoa. Of course I have my Coca-Cola. And then I also am using some gluten-free yellow cake mix. Um, I'm gluten-free, so I'm opting to use a cake mix instead of making it from scratch. If you guys would prefer to make it from scratch or without the cake mix, I will include the original recipe at the end of this video. It's just really difficult to make gluten-free stuff from scratch, so I'm just opting to use the mix. All right, so to start off, you're going to add two sticks of butter and three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa to a pan and bring it to a boil. Once that's finished, you're gonna go ahead and add one cup of Coca-Cola into the pan and stir it in so it's mixed in really well. Now that I have taken that mixture off of the heat, I'm gonna add it to my cake mix and I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in. And next I'm going to crack two eggs, which as you can see, I'm flexing because I cracked them without getting any shells in the bowl. So you're gonna crack those two eggs and whisk them in a bowl separately. And then you're gonna add those to your cake mix as well. So you're gonna mix all of that together. And here I am adding a little bit of water to the mixture just because it was a little dry. I kind of eyeballed it. This is really up to you to decide. So then I am adding a cup and a half of miniature marshmallows. Um, once you have those added to the mixture, just go ahead and fold them in. And once you're finished with that, it's gonna be time to spray down your pan, which I'm doing right here. And then once you spray down your pan, you're good to go. Just go ahead and, you know, pour that cake mixture in there. It takes me a hot minute to get all of it in, in the pan. I'm um, actually cut a lot of time out of this video of just me just pouring it in there. So, yep. Now would probably be a really good time to mention that I didn't really follow the instructions on the back of the cake mix box. I kind of just used the cake mix as a base. So anyway, this is what my batter looks like now. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the oven at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. And now let's go ahead and start working on our glaze. So the first step to our glaze is we're going to bring one stick of butter, three tablespoons of cocoa, and six tablespoons of coke to a boil. Make sure you keep it stirring it so it doesn't burn and once that is brought to a boil we're going to take it off the heat and add it to around a pound of confectioner sugar which sounds like a lot but trust me on this it's going to be really good so again i'm adding that mixture that we made on the stove to my confectioner sugar and then i'm going to start mixing it with an electric mixer so it gets that really nice silky smooth texture that we love to see with our icings so once i've done that i'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and I'm going to start mixing it with my mixer again. And this might take a little bit to get it the texture that we want, um, but just keep at it and it eventually it'll come out silky and smooth and it'll be ready for the cake. So this is my cake before icing it. And I will tell you, this is a really different recipe um, because you're going to ice the cake while it's still hot. This is gonna make the, the glaze seep through the cake and make it really nice and moist. Um, it's gonna be fantastic like a lava cake. So that is what I would recommend is to ice it while it's still hot and there's the finished product right there. So I hope you guys liked it. I will include a picture of the recipe right after this. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys try this and I hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Oh guys, if I didn't know any better, I would confuse Carly with Betty Crocker. That cake looks absolutely amazing. It makes me wanna ditch the store-bought baked goods and canned frosting and try that recipe on my own. For the final segment, tune in with one of your state vice presidents on tips on how to take care of a truck with Mr. Jacob Dinnerman. Hey FFA, for my little segment here, I'm gonna teach you some of the things that you can do while you're stuck at home to maintain your vehicle. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check tire pressure. What you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the valve stem here, but you wanna wanna make sure that you're gonna check based on your tire to see what your max capacity is. So for mine reads right here, it's gonna say that my max is 44 PSI. So when I check it, <laughs> my reader works. I'm actually at 45.5, so I'm actually a little over, but that's all right. You don't wanna be too far over. And then you wanna be able to, to look over your tires, make sure you don't have any cracks, that it's not dry rotting. And you wanna make sure that you don't have anything stuck in it, like nails, staples, or anything that's gonna affect the wear on the tire. 
All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be able to check your oil. And it's really important in maintaining the life of your engine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the dipstick out. Mine's clearly marked engine oil. And you're gonna wipe it off because you wanna have an accurate reading every time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna stick it back in. And on the dipstick, there's a little zone marked safe. Now I'm parked on an uphill, so naturally it's gonna read a little bit low. But you wanna make sure you're in that zone. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move over here to the coolant reservoir. And what this is, is uh, you've got either coolant or you can call it antifreeze, whatever it is. Uh, and you've got two lines on it. You've got one for when you're hot and one in cold. And what this does is you wanna make sure that it's reaching one of those lines. And what that does is it keeps the engine cool or keeps it from locking up during the winter. All right, so another part of when you have to pass a state inspection is you wanna make sure that you have enough tread on your tires. And so an easy little trick you can do is by taking a penny. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna stick the penny there. And in order to check the tread, you wanna make sure that you're covering most of Abe Lincoln's head, at least up, up to his hair. All right, one small, really quick little thing you wanna check over is you wanna make sure your, your battery terminals are all right. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna look at them. You just wanna make sure they're tight. Try to wiggle them around, and you also wanna make sure they're clean, which my ground terminal looks pretty all right, but my positive is a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna have to wash that a little bit later. And there's little tools that you can buy if they're just little metal bristles that can sit over the terminal and clean them off um, really easy but that's just something really quick you want to make sure you look over all right for our next thing close this we'll move over here to the windshield wipers now this is another really quick thing but it's an important one you're going to check your windshield wipers for any cracks dry rotting or any debris that's going to keep them from performing properly those are some of the small things that you can do to keep up with the maintenance of your vehicle to keep it on the road longer. Thank you, Jacob, for those awesome tips. I've learned a lot about trucks this year through Jacob, so I'm glad he got to share that information with you all as well. Well, that's the end of this episode of The Officers. If you guys decide to try any of these tips, make sure you post it on social media and tag Virginia FFA. A lot of exciting stuff is happening right now, so if you aren't already, follow Virginia FFA on our social media pages to stay updated. We hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time on The Officers.